Goal setting can be a great tool in our productivity arsenal. It's something that can keep us on the straight and narrow, helping us to get to wherever we want to go. But in my experience, people set goals in completely the wrong way. They take what they think works for companies and try and apply it to their personal life. And if your current goal setting system involves something like a quarterly goal or a yearly goal, or just something incredibly specific, then I think there's a better option out there. I know this because I speak from experience. Over the years, I've used OKRs, I've used lead lag, I've used KPIs, all these different goal setting frameworks, but none of them quite work for me. Now, recently I've been using a much simpler, lightweight goal setting framework that's been inspired by lean software development. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you that framework, how you can implement it into your personal lives so that you can start setting goals that help you focus on the right things rather than just locking you into some arbitrary goal for months at a time. Hey guys, how's it going? For those new to the channel, my name's Tom and here we talk about Notion and productivity. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, bang subscribe and you're gonna be notified when I release new weekly videos. In this video, first, we're going to go through some of the drawbacks of setting goals that you might see if you try and apply a goal setting framework from a professional point of view to your own personal life. Then we're going to go through three key principles that you need if you're going to set your own personal goals before looking at a template that I've put together that I use to personally track my personal goals and targets. Now, I'm going to leave the timestamps here so you can jump around a bit if you want, but I do think it's important that you understand the theory behind goal setting before just going into the template itself. Now the first problem I see with goal setting frameworks is quite simple and it's that they limit flexibility. Now, if you're setting goals for a company and you've got 50 people that you need to align around a vision and a target, then actually not having flexible goals is an advantage because it's such a ball ache to get everyone in the same room, to get everyone aligned on the same thing, that you don't want people being able to back out of their goals and change their mind based on new information that might arise. But as an individual, you have a huge advantage. Because you're not a huge corporation, you can actually easily pivot based on new information and new feedback as it comes in. For example, if you set a really specific goal on something, but then a new tactic, maybe a new sales tactic or a new marketing tactic started to show results, you wouldn't want to be locked into that original goal. You'd want to start exploiting that new tactic and make it work for you. The second drawback that I see to a lot of goal setting frameworks out there is they just add a lot of complexity to your productivity system. Ideally, I think a productivity system should be as light as possible. It should get out of your way and let you do the work that you know needs to be done. So you're just flowing through tasks like water through a stream. But if you're constantly thinking, well, how does this task align to my goals? And how do I update different targets in my goals? And all of this kind of stuff, it really just starts to take a lot of the fun out of it. This is not a fun way to work, nor is it an efficient way to work. So later on in this video, I'm gonna show you how, with the goal setting framework that I've set up, I only have to look at it for about 10 or 15 minutes every six weeks, and it's just completely taken care of. One of the third things that really pisses me off about some of the goal setting frameworks out there is they just lead to a lot of anxiety. If you've got a job and you've got a target that you want to get a promotion, yes, you can work harder. Yes, you can prepare a presentation for your manager. And yes, you can actually ask for a raise. But ultimately, if the market crashes and your workforce has to make half of its employers redundant, you're probably not going to get that promotion. And this is why it's really important that when we set goals, we make sure that they're in our direct control. And that's something we're going to explore a little bit later. Now we have these three problems with goals, that they can be inflexible, that they can be complex, and that they can be anxiety inducing. But that's enough problems. Let's look at some principles that we can apply to goal setting frameworks to make sure that we counter these potential disadvantages. Now the first thing is flexibility. When we create a goal or a goal setting framework, we really want to make sure that it's as flexible as possible. So there's two main ways that we actually limit our flexibility when we come to set goals. The first is that we set a time frame that is far too long. If you're setting a goal that's three or six or even a year down the line, it's really tying you into that and limiting your chance to change it further down the line. That's why I always recommend when you're setting goals, you take about six weeks as a time frame of when you're going to fulfill that goal. This is long enough that it's something to commit to and it's something you can make real progress on, but it's not too long that it draws you into something that's potentially just the wrong approach. 
So that's the first tip when it comes to flexibility. Make sure that you time box a goal to a pretty short amount of time. For me, that's about six weeks. Now, the second thing that we do is make our goals far too specific. So getting a thousand email subscribers, some people might think that that's a fairly good goal. I'd actually disagree. I think that's a very bad goal because you're being then very targeted that how you're going to engage with your fans and how you're going to achieve a certain outcome is just by getting email subscribers. Another way to look at this might be to say, well, why do I actually want to get these email subscribers? Probably it's because I want to engage with people about the subject that's interesting to me. So why not just put that as your goal and have it something like, I want to create one engaging piece of information every week about a subject area that's interesting to me. It's not limiting your flexibility and it means that if a new tactic or a new way to engage with your audience comes out, you're not going to be drawn into this narrative of, well, it has to be a newsletter and it has to be email subscribers. The second pillar of goal setting is simplicity and this is where Notion really comes into its own because you can link goals with projects and tasks. I'm going to show you how I do that later on in the video but it's really key that you get a system set up that you don't have to work on but that works for you. So the final pillar of goal setting to combat that anxiety inducing feeling that goals can sometimes give you is very simple and it's just to chill. Now, a goal should always be something that is completely in your direct control because it's when we set goals that are out of our control that we start to get that feeling of anxiety. And at the start of the year, I actually set myself a target for how many YouTube subscribers I would like to have on my channel. But again, this is not a good goal because I'm not directly in control of how many people choose to watch my video about how the algorithm behaves. Yes, of course, I have a certain amount of influence, but it's only going to give me anxiety if I'm like, I want to hit a thousand subscribers by this time or 10,000 subscribers by this time. Much better is me to focus on my internal locus of control and to set a goal around that. So something like creating a certain amount of videos or improving my videos every week these would be much better goals than me than to focus purely on the outcome and the numbers okay so let's take a look at my goal setting framework and then hopefully you can set up something similar that's going to work for you now it's important to note that everything to do with my goals is on my notion dashboard so here I have my goals, which is stuff that goes over probably around six weeks, maybe eight weeks. I usually like to keep my goals to a six week time period. Then I break these down into projects. So these are always things that can be done on a weekly basis. And then I further break these down into tasks. So you've got this really nice structure where a goal always leads to a project and projects always lead to tasks. But let's have a look at what this actually looks like in practice. So if I come in here onto my timeline uh, view that I have for you know, what I have a sort of overall master database for goals, which is big things, I click in here and I have this template that I always fill out. So the first thing that I'm doing is saying, what is the goal? Now, this for me is just general content creation. So it's business as usual content creation that I'm creating to try and engage with people who have similar interests to me. Then I ask myself, how much is that goal within my own control? And if it's less than like an eight or nine out of 10, that's usually a signal to me that this isn't a good goal to be setting because it's too focused on outcome rather than the my own internal process and my own internal locus of control. So with this, for me, putting out videos every week, putting out newsletters every week, that's something I completely have control over. So unless I get hit by a bus, uh, that's gonna go out. So that's why I've rated that 10 out of 10. Now the appetite for this goal I've put as six weeks and this is always what I ask myself before going through any endeavor when setting a new goal. How long am I willing to stick with this goal for? And six weeks is long enough that in that time period I'm going to sort of have a good notion as to whether this content creation is something I want to keep pursuing or whether it's something that I don't think is working for me and I want to leave at the wayside. The third thing that I ask myself is how does this contribute towards my overall vision? Now, vision I think is really important when it comes to setting goals because if you don't have like a general vision about in the next sort of one or two years where you want your life going, and this can be very vague, but some idea is really going to help inform your goals when you come to set them. And that's why I always think having a vision is actually way more important than having goals. 
So for me, the way that this contributes to my vision is that I need to improve my communication skills and I'm also really passionate about building up a fan base of people who are really interested in what I have to say. So putting out this content, putting out these videos is really gonna to contribute to that in the future. Now the next thing I have here is a relational database to projects. So within here, I'm then breaking down these goals into different projects and a project is always a week long. If it's longer than that, I break it out down into something smaller. And the projects mean that every week I'm gonna be stepping towards in some way the progression of achieving my goal. So usually what I'll do in this case is add maybe the first one or two milestones that I know I'm gonna to wanna to achieve in terms of these projects. And in this case, it's just these two videos. I don't usually like to set all of the milestones and all of the projects when I create the goal because there's just a lot of uncertainty. I don't know in three or four weeks time exactly what type of video I'm gonna to wanna to be creating because I get feedback very quickly and I wanna be able to react to that. And this is a really powerful thing about breaking down your goals into these little projects is they give you that level of agility so that you can respond to feedback as it comes in. So once I've set my goal, I then go down into uh, what I call little things, which is basically just projects. I just give them these silly names because it, yeah, it just keeps me motivated when I'm working. And I'll then decide on when I actually want to complete that project. So say goals uh, in Notion, which is the video I'm doing now, that's something that contributes towards my overall goal of business as usual content creation. And I'm doing that this week. Now my 2021 Notion tour, uh, which will be being released uh, sometime in January, that I'll do next week. And then I can just come in here and just add new ideas as they come about. So let's say I want to add uh, a new project which is gonna contribute towards that goal. I'll just come in here, let's say it's a YouTube video. And at the moment I've been really interested in this idea of iterative design when it comes to Notion. So I'll just create that iterative iterative design. I'll then set the publish date if that's required and I'll then relate it to the goal which is my business as usual content creation and then you can see if I come back into here it's going to show me in the related projects what's been done. Now you could get really fancy here and you know set yourself a target of doing six things and have these check off when you've completed them so you can see your progress towards a goal. I personally don't like to do that just because it's very simple for me to say, every week I'm gonna create a project that's going to contribute towards this goal. Now, one of the great things about Notion is you can really leverage their idea of templates, which is gonna make setting things like goals so much easier. So whatever I do when I come to create a new goal is I come into the goals uh, timeline view I drag it out to the amount of time that I want that goal to last. I come in and let's give my goal a title. So at the moment I'm really sort of keen over the Christmas period to get a professional looking website up and running. So let's just type that in, uh, create a website. Then I have this goal template, which relates to what you saw earlier. So now I've used that goal template, you can see that it's already pre-populated, these different things that I need to fill in to prompt me when I'm creating this goal. So now you've got the framework set up, it's really just a case of adding a couple of projects that are gonna help you start making progress towards that goal. In the case here, mine are gonna be mapping out the requirements of the website and then learning a no-code solution to make the website, which is gonna be Webflow in this instance. And then all it's a case of doing is taking those projects, making sure that they're a week long and putting them into the project's timeline. So there you have it, that's my lightweight goal setting framework. By starting with a goal which is time box to about six weeks, being very sort of broad with the goals that you set yourself and making sure that they're completely within your zone of control, focusing on the process rather than the output. Then it's just a case of breaking those goals down into manageable projects of about a week long each so that every week you can make some sort of progress towards that goal. And I've been following this now for a few months and it's working really, really well for me. But I'd be curious to know how does goal setting work for you? Is there anything that you really love about your goal setting system at the moment? Or do you think incorporating something lightweight like this would really work for you? I'm also gonna leave a video here on how you can merge projects in with data daily task, which is the level below the goal setting to projects which we just looked at. And thanks a lot for sticking around and enjoy the rest of your day.